Welcome everybody to this World Satsanga held on the 29th of May 2021 and again I am grateful and thank Kevin Moore for the help he's got in broadcasting the Satsangas and of course doing his own work with the, um, the series of documentaries he's called they call us channelers and it's looking really good there's a lot of detail there a lot of, a lot of data and lots of different qualities of individual and different qualities of channeling as well so I, I really do uh, urge you to go and visit his YouTube channel and uh, check it out. Kevin Moore's documentary or series of documentaries called They Call Us Channelers. Fantastic work. Um, let's look at the agenda for today and the first part is a talk about why so many people are told they've been Jesus or other famous people or have been associated with such a people. Then we go through the list of what's now three A4 pages of questions so I hope we can go through those. Um, it's clear and as concise a way or just pay attention to the fact that um, most of these are channeled on the spot even though if I get in, in, an instantaneous answer it's it's not me answering it's the information that's coming through me from source and um, the last 15 minutes is a meditation to be one with everything or one and everything with the multiverse okay so that we, I think we need to be to want to feel as if we're all one at the moment with all, all the things that are going on in the world right now Okay, anyway, so let's have a look at this, this thought process of why so many people are told they have been Jesus or the famous people. Well, as most of you are aware, there is a, a function within the source that we call the Akashic Records. And the Akashic Records isn't the only record. There's a, a, a record for every one of the different ways in which we can interact with an environment at a different frequency or in a different um, vehicle type or body type. So for every body type there are, or every civilization, if you want to use, use those descriptions, there is a record for it. It's just that the one that's associated with the, with the incarnate mankind is called the Akashic. Now, <clears throat> with this, we have the opportunity to experience anything and everything without experiencing it firsthand. So a soul can enter into the Akashic records, and if they want to have an incarnation, um, that gives them a, a level of experience but they need to have additional experience to be able to experience that experience properly they can enter into uh, an existence that another aspect or soul has had in an incarnate state experiences I'm, I'm going to say remotely but as a download for example in its entirety again the same level of, of understanding Obviously, it's not first-hand experience, but it's, it's, it is the same level of understanding, and then that, and then that, then that, um, that experience is passed on to them when they come into an incarnation. So, for instance, if they if they needed to have an experience of being able to sail a boat, um, to help them do something else like diving, for example, then they they would know how to, inherently know how to sail a boat, and they would be able to pick it up really easily. And then the experience of doing of, of learning how to dive which they may not, may not know about would be assisted by this ability to understand how to work with boats and it's the same with other things like working with animals working with the with working with the environment being a great painter you know, pianist cellist um, you know, drummer mathematician artist you know all these different things can 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 assist in the way that we interact with our existing incarnation but having assisted our our desire for the interaction or, or, or the gathering of that, that knowledge or that experience by having other skills that we've gathered um, into us from the Akashic Records but not actually experienced ourselves as an incarnate soul. Now then, so what does this mean in terms of why are so many people told they've been Jesus or other famous people or been associated with famous people? What this means is that <coughs> it's very likely, very possible that one of two things happen. Firstly, these people can experience being a disciple of Jesus or Muhammad or, um, you know, or any of the, the, the important yogis within, um, within India. 
by going to the Akashic Records so they can experience it for themselves what it's like to be a devotee or what it's like to be a world leader or what it's like to be a person of influence or a spiritual spiritual leader and and, and so there are obviously individuals who are noted or, or, or market individuals within the, the, the current understandable or recognized history of incarnate mankind that fulfill those requirements Jesus being one of them Muhammad being one of them for example um, and 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 other notable individuals John the Baptist for example Mary Magdalene um, Confucius uh, except you know Saint Germain, all, all, <laughs> all of these, yeah, Moses, yeah, you, you can, the list can go on, um, even down to Alexander the Great. So it's 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 a, it, the ability to be able to be part of that existence, but not be not but not actually have been part of the interaction, the physical interaction, is down to us. So it's quite often that souls can come into an incarnation, and when they go into hypnosis, which is with, with um, Dolores Cannon's quantum healing hypnosis technique, QHHT, or other forms of hypnosis, or they have a reading from somebody, that they will have been told that, oh, you've been associated with Jesus, or you've been associated with Muhammad, or, or you were part of the Second World War and you were with um, Montgomery, for example, right-hand man. But actually you weren't. But you've experienced that incarnation by going to the Akashic Records because the experience of the knowledge that's been accrued within that, that incarnation by another soul is going to help you in this incarnation. And so that's why those, information, those pieces of information come through. The second part of why we, we sometimes get a, a reading which says that we've been a, a notable person or, or very close to a notable person is if the ability for the soul through it being a higher frequency allows a higher level of bandwidth, communicative bandwidth. And so it's it's possible that one of the aspects that are projected from our true energetic self, which we sometimes call our Godhead or Oversoul or Higher Self, um, could have projected in a smaller aspect of itself um, into one of these bodies that ends up being a, a notable person. And that information then is brought into that were true and entity self and is shared amongst the sentience, the individualized sentience that is us in this particular incarnate state. And so we would share that which has been experienced by another part of our higher self or true and entity self, Godhead over soul, in a different in a different individualized state. So everything that our true energetic self experiences through its projections into the growth, into the gross physical or the or other frequencies within the physical universe is also passed on and shared to other parts of its sentience, which includes us. The the third way, which I didn't mention, so I said I mentioned two ways. The third way is that, in essence, source experiences everything as well. So, as source experiences everything actually in a higher level so does all of the different inc true energetic cells god's heads over souls higher selves also experience it because they're all because we're all part of or a, you know a, a disseminated structured aspect of source entity sentience and so everything that is experienced by anything else that is source that includes the true energetic cells and the and the aspects, projected aspects or souls, and the shards, which is the sub-souls, is shared by every, everything else. So although we have individualized sort of personalized experiences that gains different levels of, of, of evolutionary progression, because we're experiencing things in different ways, which all adds towards the overall evolutionary progression of the source, the ability to experience or have contact with that which has been experienced by another soul from another true energetic self is also possible on a very very high level and some individuals do pick this up and some channelers or some mediums have the ability to and sometimes quite by accident and they don't know they're doing it is to go into or bypass some of the the natural frequency level blockages not 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 actual blockages but things that are created as a result of low frequency being here and go straight to where the, 
the, the connections are and um, and access that information. So we have the possibility there of passing information on from the higher level as well, which is um, which, which is again another reason why so many people can experience the possibility of being associated with a, a noted person, and th and this is um, it's quite imp it's quite important to note that we can get it through the activities of the other aspects that are projected into the physical from our true energetic self if they've experienced something else we can get it from from the source from the overall sort of knowledge that the source has got and we can also get it from the akashic records directly before we incarnate to be able to help us and so we can experience things like being close to all of the, any or all of the so-called famous individuals in in earth's history and of course off earth as well to be able to experience these things and this is and this is why so many people are told they've been associated with jesus or the famous people muhammad confucius alexander the great you know even people like hitler or 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 um j Edgar hoover or, or other noted individuals in our, in our past you know george washington this is because we can access the information quite readily when we're in the energetic Okay, so let's move on to the, the questions. Let's start with the first question then. This is from EK. And uh, the first question is, is there a liberation of the planets happening at the moment with the help of est from extraterrestrials? And um, this is a common thing currently being told throughout the New Age spiritual UFO community. Um, <clears throat> well, we are getting help, but the, <laughs> the objective is not to do things for us but moreover to help us help ourselves, so to speak. There's, a, there's an old adage, which is a very famous adage, uh, give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day. Give a man a, a or teach a man to fish, <laughs> or give him a fishing rod, and or, or even a line, etc., etc., and they'll feed themselves for the rest of their lives. So, so really the help we are getting is really about how we think, behave and act, and expanding our acceptance of other form factors and, and and to be honest the other form factors um with there's lots of different humanoid form factors isn't there on earth we've got the afro caribbeans what the white um, europeans um american indians chinese um japanese variants of the chinese etc 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 even down to the maoris in, in in the in the pacific and the in the hawaiians as well so we can see there are there are different variants of humanoid already and the, the whole point of it is and some of these things that are happening today and, and on on the planet uh trying to teach us to be more acceptance of, of, of our diversity and not think of us ourselves as being you know a particular type of human being but just being a soul that is using a, a human body as a vehicle to experience learn and evolve and that basically we're all one and the same thing it's just that we just happen to have had the honor of being incarnate and, and it is honourable, irrespective of whether we have a, uh, you know, a particular skin colour, a particular lineage, whether we're born with a disabled condition or what we think is a disabled condition or not. The whole point is we're honoured to be able to be incarnate and, we, and we're being helped to understand that. And so the next part of this question is, does, does the Galactic Federation exist? Is it a true federation? Well, my, again, my understanding of this, and this is a question has been asked a couple of times, is that there are groups of, shall we say, um, incarnate civilizations? That means that they, again they're just a body type that is being to, that is being used by souls to experience, learn, and evolve. That have um, originated from different locations within the physical universe or even the local galaxy, um, and, and and at different frequencies, and that they all within their the location depending upon their ability to move around the galaxy or the or the ability to move around the, the wider universe do in some respects group together to assist each other in in the in their in their progress and when they evolve to certain levels of understanding they 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 understand the real reason for our being here and as a result of that they help each other to experience learn and evolve um, doing everything they can to help each other rather than trying to um, shall we say war with each other so to speak 
Okay, so I hope that helps. So there are, so, so just to answer the question, there are, there are lots of different federations depending upon the ability. Federations or groups, I think the word group is better because the federation sort of gives a, 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 a strange um, sort of angle on what, what, what a group of, 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 of incarnate souls might be expected to or, might, or, or would do. Okay, next question is from JG. Um, I recently discovered that Japanese fisheries are still engaging in the killing of dolphins, whales and sharks en masse. Um, there is a cove where some of this is happening regularly um, called Taiji in Japan. Um, I've, ho I've heard you explain that dolphins and whales are part of a few advanced civilizations that currently exist on Earth. I'm confused as to why this is being allowed to happen. Is there a larger purpose that we are unaware of? Does this have any effect on the combined frequential level of our current reality? Uh, it does have an effect on us, yes. And to be honest, <laughs> we don't seem to have much problem with killing each other in wars, do we? From a human perspective, let alone uh, understanding the level of sentience in, uh, involved with some of the animals that are on the planet. So the, these entities, because they exist with a higher level of, of evolutionary um, progression, or should I say, sentience associated with being highly evolved whilst incarnate in a lower frequency, they they understand that in sacrificing their physical form, that they they are assisting in some small way in our ability to start to understand that you know, the 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 killing of any animal for food isn't necessary and that all, all animals are sentient and have a level of sentience associated with them because they're all you know they're all individualized functions of their true entity self uh, and and, the, and as a result of that they're all parts of the source so it's all part of a you know letting us do something until we realize it's wrong and and that and that, and that includes us killing ourselves in wars for example it's quite a it seems quite bizarre from a human perspective, but that's but that's that, that's what I'm picking up. Okay, next question is from NS, and this is a, a, quite a good question actually. It says, "So if guardian angels are our guides, then Quan Yin, Merling, Surface Bay, Isis, and such, uh, etc., whose guides are they? Are they some sort of overall guides for the humanity to help us with our growth, or are they just our own guides and help us assuming the role, roles, and personalities and, and forms?" we react and to and trust and would dragons actually be caretakers environmental specialists as they seem to be involved with the caretaker of nature um <clears throat> the our our, our helpers or and our guides are, are, are a different group of entities these entities that are classified as being um ascended masters are, are simply that they're they are aspects um who we, together with their the true entity self have ascended beyond the need to incarnate, but do desire to help us in some way. Now they can do that from the energetic, or they can do it by having temporary, temporary excursions into the lower physical. So, so basically, they are. You, you could almost call them overall guides, but they are. But they're more over their sort of their souls that have evolved or, or they've worked or they've, they've navigated beyond the need to incarnate and are, but, but, are, but are assisting others to to help us and that's the same with all of the the ascended masters or the so-called um, major ascended masters and the, and, and the and the vast majority of the, of, the, of the minor ascended masters although we also have to understand that when when a, a soul moves beyond the need to incarnate it's it's got its other work to do so these 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 aspects or souls who decide to stick around um, <clears throat> and help us to move through this this hiccup we're having in understanding our our, our own individualised free will is of benefit to everybody provided we use it properly and and that we need to work with each other in a, a more caring and sharing and loving way is is part of what they're doing for us. And in terms of the, the in terms of dragons, dragons are um, they exist in a different frequential level um still part of the of, of the of the physical universe but they exist in a different frequential level and i'm not picking up that they are caretakers themselves so much um but they they do 
the or the should say I should say they are they are more in tune with the with how to work with the natural environment, whereas we seem to some of us do seem to be in tune with it and others don't. So it's it's quite a quite a quite a quite a contrast there. But they but then but they're not caretakers although they would support the maintenance of um, by their own natural interaction on their frequential level with the natural environment around them. So they are so they are and also, there's one of the things that we, we would note that there are times when um, some of the caretakers who are working on the gross physical aspect of the of, of of the of the universe and specifically where we are now on the Earth, they may well adopt a an image um, or a or have an appearance that may well be interpreted by ourselves as being dragon like. So sometimes there are. Elementals, we want to call them that. Um, we sometimes call them pixies or or fairies or uh, you know, leprechauns, etc. That that are interpreted as being human, but also aren't human. And you know, the the and, and sometimes those elementals, when they're doing their work, they may have an appearance that that is translated as being dragon-like, although they're not dragon-like. So it's so this is something that we do tend to sort of translate ourselves based upon what we've been educated in. Um, whether it's been in correct education or correct education, and so my 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 understanding is dragons are basically a function of a, a higher, a, a slightly higher frequential level within the the um, the universe that we are existing within, and, and specifically specifically within within the say the fourth and fifth frequencies, but are present not only on Earth on other locations as well. Okay, well thank you for that question. Very good. Second one's from. Nick, well, next one's from BA. Why are, pe why are people saying they can cure autism? Will this kind of protocol numb down the abilities or s source connection of autistic kids and children? Um, you have to understand that <laughs> the vast majority of the population of the Earth are blind. They're deaf, dumb, and blind. They are immersed in their incarnate state. And so anything that is uh, different to that is, 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 is not natural. So People generally consider their 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 immersed incarnate state as being the norm, and anything else needs to be cured to create the norm. So, any drug-based therapies, or anything else that, or, or even even some sort of, some forms of hypnosis that are designed to cut off the connectivity of what we call autistic individuals. That includes that includes Down Down syndrome, etc., um, or Asperger's. Is only going to stop them from functioning in the way they're supposed to be functioning. So, the answer is yes. Th there's no physical cure for autism because autism isn't, isn't an issue. It's a function of it's a higher function. It's a higher frequential function that these children are experiencing. Um, or the souls they're experiencing in, the, in, in that particular body, that, in that growth state. So, why try to cure something that doesn't is, does, doesn't exist as a, as a fault, other than you know, mankind in its, in its ignorance thinks that because it's not not not, the, not what the general population are experiencing, um, then there's something wrong with it, and therefore it needs to be it needs to be cured. Um, so the answer is yes. If they, if they try to cure it with chemicals or, or any other form of um, reprogramming in that way then all they're going to do is to stop those those particular souls from functioning properly in those bodies next question if we are to reduce the anxiety in autistic person via homeopathic and herbalism is that okay the only way to really reduce the anxiety in, in, in autistic individuals is to understand them and work with them on their level because they're communicating with us on multiple different energetic levels as well as the the gross physical five senses so trying to work with them with homeopathy or herbalism is simply a tr a trying to apply a physical medication that is not too far removed from the than the western medicine side of things homeopathy if used properly may or could be used to let them know who they are because the right homeopathic treatments would would augment their connectivity and somebody who is working with them 
who can say, well, you know, you need to understand that what you're experiencing is is real for you, and is is a real human response, but that 99.99 recurring percent of the population of the Earth are not switched on as you guys, then the homeopathy, then the homeopathy might assist in reducing the anxiety. But my feeling is that it's a, something like psycho-spiritual reprogramming would, resi would reduce the anxiety together with the interaction with people who understand them and can support their thought process and justify their thought process but that, that, and that would reduce the, um, the the anxiety that they feel because the anxiety is about being accepted not being unaccepted so to speak okay next a group of questions i think there is looking like there's actually 12 questions here we've got a number six twice <laughs> um is from wp and so we'll, we'll move on is the evolution of a tess dependent upon the evolution of its individual aspects is a tess's current place in the multiverse dependent upon its evolution i.e some tesses are more evolved than others and so reside in the in the higher frequency universes um very simply the tess although it does depend upon the evolutionary progression of, of its individual aspects also evolves in its own right as well so it's a codependence system there and the location within the multiverse is dependent upon its evolution because the multiverse is a a metric for a, a revolution progression as well as being a, a an environment for evolutionary ex experiential experience and therefore progression as well and yes there are different locations that tesses are um, located within based upon their evolution so some are more evolved than others how fast we evolve is not an issue it's, it's how we do it that counts and everybody's doing it in a different way so so it doesn't matter whether one is faster than another it's, it's evolving or one's higher than another is evolving the, the, it's, it is the the collective evolutionary level and the experiential content associated with getting that that or lead toward that evolution level which is, which is important and so yes they are they're dotted all over the all over the, the um, frequential levels of the multiverse yeah without doubt there's a lot that no, no, nobody's in the same place although of course clearly there are some individual true energetic selves that are in the same frequential level and they're, therefore the same universe within the multiverse um, but everyone is doing it in their own way so the next question, did all the Tessies begin at the same level and, and have all had to create earthbound or equivalent aspects to evolve? Um, yes, basically. Um, not just on Earth, of course. We, the projected aspects of sentience from the Trinity itself, we call the soul, can, can go in any, any, fun, any location within the physical universe at any, at any frequency. Um, if so, did those Tessies at a higher, higher level frequency universes that no longer need to incarnate graduate from Earth? physical universe at some time in the, in the past yes um, although it has been recognized that earth is a, an, a, an a as a with our individualized free will here is, a, is a basically an evolutionary accelerant um, not all aspects and therefore true energetic cells have moved on upwards in the frequency in the frequencies or evolved upwards in the frequencies as a function of simply being on earth it is possible to experience evolution at any frequential level clearly within the physical universe and and not so specific on earth it's just that the the earth gives a higher level of evolutionary progression because of the individualized free will we have okay next bit next part this is looking at the 397 levels this is universes within the multiverse it appears that a high percentage of tests no longer need to incarnate and that a smaller percentage are still creating aspects for the purpose of incarnation does that mean that we're all laggards <laughs> no um think of it in these terms if we have to go from point a to point b let's say we fly from new york to um, los angeles we can travel there in multiple different ways <clears throat> we can fly there and we can get there in a few hours and we've done the job we've moved from from point a to point b the the traveling from um, um new york for instance for instance to to los angeles being the goal however we can do it we can other we can fly there as the fast way or we can do a more in-depth version which is 
driving there or going on a train or going on a greyhound bus or hitchhiking or push biking there or or going on a motorcycle okay or we can travel a certain distance and stay there for two or three months you could argue that the one is slower than the other but one is also gives a, a, a greater depth of detail of understanding and experience than the others and this is fine this is perfectly okay because we're experiencing it in a different way the whole point is that we don't try to copy each other but although we might be doing something similar we if we do anything in a slightly different way that gives the depth and de depth of detail and the depth behind the the quality of, of, of evolution progression that we're having okay so I hope that answers that question number three when a test creates an aspect to incarnate in the physical universe I assume we are talking about the earth as well as other countless earths in the, in the physical universe yes we we don't just incarnate on earth we incarnate in other locations within the first three frequencies and other locations within the other frequencies associated with the physical universe which of course the frequencies four through to twelve so we can so we we can incarnate anywhere clearly though the higher the frequency we incarnate into the more diffuse or the more or the closer to the energetic that that particular incarnate vehicle becomes okay so there's Yes, but it's countless of the planets. We call them planets, or I like to call them locations of, of local density. Okay. Next question. Do our tessies create aspects to incarnate on the higher frequencies of the physical universe? On other high frequency universes? We... Our tessies do um, project aspects of itself in the higher frequencies of the physical universe and they also project aspects themselves into other universes that are classified as being energetic which is obviously the 13th universe up to the the, the 397th but the thing is that the difference that when we're incarnating into lower frequencies the the ability to experience is more difficult because of the lower frequencies. The, the, the ability to know who and what we are and how to navigate through the incarnation is more difficult. So we gain more evolutionary progression by working with lower frequencies than we do with higher frequencies. That doesn't mean to say we all crowd into the lower frequencies, but what it means is that we, we do move around. We, we experience one, one frequency level, then another frequency level, then we might go back to the first one um, in terms of experiencing the, how to experience it in a, a specific environment, the circumstances within the environment that are created by those other incarnate aspects that are working with that environment as well. So Tessies do create other aspects to incarnate into the higher frequencies of the, of the physical universe and in the other universes as well within the multiverse. Yes, they do. Next question. When we say that us aspects have had many lives, that implies that when the body dies, we do not re-emerge with our tests but maintain our individual aspect sentience awaiting the next incarnation or do we do both re-merge but also maintain our individual aspect sentience do us aspects only re-merge with our tests after we graduate from incarnating altogether well merging is what I would call it communion and the an aspect can enter into a number of different states of communion which range from remaining projected and having to full individuality whilst still being connected with the with the, with the true energetic self to totally reintegrating with the true energetic self and the individuality being diffused into just collectiveness so to speak um, and that collectiveness can be re reassigned as being individuality should the true energetic self decide to do so so if, if you um, go onto the website and look at uh, the the events and lectures you will see that there's a number of different PDF files that you can just download for free and one of them is who we are and how we incarnate um, and if you look at that you'll see that there's about six different ways in which we can which we are individualized or can re can recommune with our true energetic self after we finish a particular incarnation so and depending upon us as individualized aspects, our own desires, or the desire of our true energetic self depends upon how we re-commune with it. And we can enter into a level of communion which is within the, the energies uh, and the sentience of the true energetic self, 
and it can be diffuse but still individualized or it can be totally diffused into being oneness okay read that have, have, a, have a look at those um I'll, I'll try to in the in, in the in the um in the blog of the emails and hopefully within the transcript i'll send some link uh, send a link so you can look so you can look at the um the different lectures that are there and download them they're free downloads so just download them. They're, they're only a pdf file and sometimes if you look on the on youtube you might find that um might be snippets of some of those lectures there or the full lecture there um me lecturing them as well so i'll also leave that link for you all as well okay next question do we as aspects have a sex or are we just occupying a body that has sex how do we account for a gay person and an opposite sex body do testes have a, have a sex i think not no duality um is only a function of the physical universe and the the ability to reproduce the bodies so that we can so that our souls can continue to come and experience is a function of the the, the bringing together of the, the two opposites because although at one point the the human form was hermaphroditic it it became shall we say contaminated by various different things as we drew as we as we moved down the frequencies so the, it became more robust to have two components that would get together and allow the 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 diversity of physicality to, to merge together so that there's a, so that those gross physical forms when they uh, was conceived and gestated became more resilient to some of the things that happened to us as we moved down the frequencies and for people who are you know either in same-sex marriages for example or same-sex relationships it's simply because they they either find more camaraderie with with, with same-sex um, uh, souls or, or there is there is a, a, a memory of being in a previous body and a, and a, and a, and a, a desire to have been in that body whilst being in the in the, in the, the body that they're in um, or there's been a, a multitude of incarnations in one form factor one body type and then they then they suddenly find themselves in a, in a different body type so so it becomes a bit confusing but it's you know it's not an issue really it's the, it's the experience that counts and that experience means that that those souls also um, are, are evolving as well and you know there's a lot there's a lot that is you sometimes find that you know you know same-sex relationships um, or even new to sex relationships if <laughs> for example are sometimes more fulfilling than opposite sex relationships because they are in tune with each other and it's the being in tune which is what counts at the end of the day okay next one concerning the masters the earth was visited by buddha jesus and muhammad approximately 500 years apart no such visitations for the past 1500 years why not saint germain was 40 400 years ago but had less impact others but if so minimal impact it seems that a master such as jesus would not go through all the effort of 2000 years ago and just see mankind misuse and abuse his incarnation ignore his message or at least obscure it through the church over the centuries and not follow up on what we, what he started where is the aspect that jesus is now what does he think of all this or has he won and done and now emerged or or was he won and done oh okay i think that's because he finishes incarnations now and re-emerged with his test um basically we've, we've answered the question as to where jesus is before um and and, it's, and the and the test can move around basically the the aspect that we call jesus was simply a body that a, that a soul of, of of a higher level of evolution used to give us the opportunity to understand how to exist in, a, in or to navigate around through through incarnation in a really efficient way and therefore um don't accrue karma and and of course the buddha's done a similar thing and muhammad's done a similar thing and confucius done a similar thing and saint germain's done a similar thing but it was seen my, in my understanding that we were starting to understand and move forwards and so the need for visible um 
or should we say focus on one particular individual as being a major a major um, mover and shaker let's use modern terminology wasn't necessary so we have people like Yogananda we have people like Babaji we have people um, who other people who are around the world who are spiritual leaders um, uh, for instance you know, Gandhi for example um, and, and other notable individuals who have made a difference and uh, making us think but aren't so shall we say visible as what Jesus or Buddha or Muhammad would have been or Jermaine would have been so there's still the help being there but not so visible I mean Babaji for example is is is, is works in the background and a lot of other individuals work in the background as well and so there are they are there but they realize that the ability to be able to do things in an effective way doesn't necessarily mean they have to be so visible that it causes a stir <laughs> sometimes sometimes causing a stir causes more more confusion than, than, than if things happen in the background so right now because of the population of the earth being so big as it is it makes more sense to work in in little groups with people so that the the groups disseminate the information themselves through triangulation rather than trying to create us one particular one particular sort of hit I mean Greta Thunberg for example is becoming quite a a, a notable individual for making us work with work with uh, our environment in a, in a better way and you can see the amount of pressure that is being put on her from groups of individuals who don't see the need to look after the work the world for example because they, they only see it in terms of greed and money so it's difficult for Greta Thunberg to do her job properly because she's so visible now she's doing a superb job and there'll be others like her there's other white children like her but they're not all going to be quantitative some of them will be qualitative leaders and again another group of them will be in the background doing things in the background to move things on in a subliminal way rather than a you know very much in your face way so so that so to answer the question um the aspect that jesus had basically done its job um as as has you know the buddha and muhammad but there are there is still help from those aspects or souls who are highly evolved who are moving things in a in, in a way which is more consistent with or more compatible with where we are now as, as a as a as a as a race of incarnate um entities so to speak okay next question who was Apollo, apollonius of turner apparently a contemporary of jesus with mystical powers and why wasn't he made out to be a, to be a god as jesus was hmm. i've never heard of that name to be honest i'm going to have to um, meditate and connect Um, what I've been told here is that he was a contemporary of Jesus and he was taught in the same way as Jesus was with the Essenes and the, the his role was fairly similar to Babaji's it was to show that things are possible but do it in the background so whereas Jesus was a a quantitative teacher clearly with um, good connections to source um, Apollonius was really a um, a qualitative stroke in the background type of teacher and so this is why he didn't receive the same amount of shall we say <laughs> marketing <laughs> so to speak and and has therefore dr drifted into the in, into the backs of people's memories and the backs of history and and therefore has been forgotten okay and because there's lots of others like that as well um, by the way who are who have helped us and who have been noted and have been forgotten over the over the the, the centuries and the um 
thousands of years sometime. Next question, when an aspect creates a shard, how is that done? Is the aspect consciously aware of such creation? The, the shards are created whilst the aspect is in the energetic. The desire to create more versions, smaller versions of itself to experience learn and evolve in a more paralyzed, para, parallel way, not paralyzed, parallel way, is something that's decided in the energetic. So as a function of moving here into lower frequencies, um, we do tend to lose that connectivity because we start to become associated with the human form because we, as, a, as an individualized unit of sentience, we are very much compartmentalized in the human form and during the gestation periods and, and, the, and the birth in the first few years, we, we experience such levels of <laughs> poor connectivity that we start to f r relate to ourselves as being the human form. So, so basically, we would forget that we created a shard or shards. Um, but when the aspect returns to the energetic, it recognizes those shards and they're regathered into it. In fact, shards only, only exist as long as the aspect is, is incarnate or as it was individualized. So, so when the, when the aspect moves back, moves back into the energies, it is more often the case than those incarnate shards, if they haven't already finished their incarnation, will have that incarnation terminated, so to speak, and move back into the aspect. Okay, next question. Uh, was the physical universe and the aspects that have inhabited it created purposefully? purposefully? Are aspects lack of awareness of who they are, where they came from, where they're going, their purpose, their lack of spiritual awareness, left to ponder the imponderable throughout the ages of by design, or as a means to experience, learn, and evolve? Or was it that aspects forget who they are along the way of becoming enamored with the physical occurring karma, which is then necessitated reincarnation to eventually remember their origin and graduate from the physical? Uh, basically, an aspect always remembers who and what it is when it's back in the energetic, because of the, the, because of the increase in communicative bandwidth, full stop. We, as we move into the higher frequencies, it's not remembering who and what we are. It's like coming out of being in a, in a state of amnesia, so to speak. The, there's no aspect that forgets who and what it is. We, there are aspects that are temporarily in forgetfulness when their, their physical form uh, demises because they, they get addicted to being on the earth and they want to stay with the earth so they, don't, so they, they resist the opportunity of, removing, of going back into the energetic. And some of those are classified as ghosts or poltergeists, etc. And some of them just hang around or create their own environment, um, because we can create anything when we when we are in the, in the energetic. And they create what they expect to see or be, and they or they create continuity of what they were before they before their physical body demised. But every one of them, um, obviously, if they if they if they are, are, are uh, attached to or addicted to wanting to feel physicality, then that's, that, that, that's karma, basically. But eventually, every aspect will be, will be assisted back into the energetic and remembering who and what they are. And so they will, they will all eventually know who and what they are and regain their, their knowledge base the, and the connectivity with their true energetic self, go through their, their, their life plan, etc., with, with their guide and helpers, and then eventually plan another, another incarnation. There is, no, there is no soul that's left behind, there is no soul that is left pondering as to what, what they are or, or, or are left ignorant as to what they are. Every soul goes back to um, a level of frequential existence that allows them to either recommune with their true energetic self or become more aware of who and what they are and then continue. Okay, next question. It utterly amazes me that the history of humankind is so pathetic. <laughs> And that such a race is necessary to accomplish our source entity's purpose. Did the source entity expect this, or was it all part of it knowing itself? Everything that happens within the multiverse is a function of the source giving us all free reign to do what we want to do. In doing so, it is getting a multipulous, <laughs> that's a big word that, isn't it, way of experiencing things concurrently. We 
even with doing things that we feel are wrong or or are inappropriate or inefficient are creating the ability to have a complete level of experience and therefore a complete depth of experience which gives a a, com a complete high quality of evolution progression so although it seems that humankind is being pathetic in its learning ability to to respect and love each other the process that we're going through gives a depth of experience which is giving it like a holistic level of, of understanding holistic level of experiential progression a holistic knowledge base a holistic level of evolution which if we all experience the good side we wouldn't be doing the the benefit of let of, of the source letting everything happen is that everything happens <laughs> and if it controlled it it would be controlled a controlled situation is a slow way of evolving letting things happen randomly which is basically what it is as a function of us having our own individualized free will or not in other areas of the physical universe or, or when we in the energetic allows us to experience things in a complete way concurrently rather than really doing things in the preferred way doing things in the preferred way is fine when we start to understand how to incarnate and how to navigate round incarnations into a, into a, in, at a level that allows us to do what we need to do and get out but until we can do that we are experiencing things in a way which appears to be completely random or, or, or sometimes inappropriate or sometimes not liked or loved but it's allowing us to to experience it holistically and that's what source wants that's what origin wants it wants to have everything not just the good bits <laughs> and certainly not just the bad bits it wants everything okay last question from wp breaking from past practice apparently the u.s government will be releasing a comprehensive report on the high levels of recent ufo activity observed through various means by the military some say this is a massive intelligence failure on the part of the government as they have no worldly explanation for this nor what to do about it if anything so what's new what's the difference about this activity compared with um, historical activity uh, forget the words ufo forget the words government it's all about the start of us being transparent with each other and when we start to be transparent with each other we start to understand more we start to trust each other more we start to work with each other more in a loving and caring and sharing way so all of these things that have been held back are starting to become public and so everything is considered to be equal and honest in the same way so it's rather than being associated with a particular government we have to think of it in terms of our ability to be transparent with each other and understand that each of us should experience what each and every one of us needs to experience or would experience or can experience and does experience in the energetic because there's nothing hidden in the energetic everything is experienced everything is experienced concurrently by each other at a higher level or we can go to the Akashic records as I've previously stated and we can experience it second hand as, as, as if it's us doing it but it's actually another ent entity has experienced it and we are having a, a fully immersive experience which gives us the same level of ability or same level of um, experience to allow us to do other experiences that we couldn't do without these primary experiences being in place it's a bit like building the tools to build the tools to build the tools okay well, that's a good set of questions WP thank you very much and now we've got um, a few more questions one is from EM and this it goes this way my question is this what will or could happen when humanity realizes that the reason for our existence is for the origin to know itself we desire to have consciousness and it seems that at some point we may get there so if that was to happen how may we react to it and what could happen to us subsequently and also to origin well let's look at it this way 
when we start to understand who and what we are, the the awareness of it is going to grow. It won't be instantaneously, but it'll be grow organically, if I want to use a word that's, that, is, that, is, that is popular. And so we start we will start to understand that we are not individual, but we are part of a bigger entity, a, gross, a bigger entity. You know, we are aspects of a trinity itself, who, who, which are aspects of a horse, which are aspects of origin. This will be a profound level of understanding because right now we fear loss of individuality. Death is a loss of individuality, so to speak. And so when we move, when we start to understand that we are part of something bigger, and therefore, although we're individualized, we may be, we may enter back into communion, full communion, which is full integration with lack of in, lack of individuality. Then, and we desire this. Then, it doesn't matter about maintaining individuality, and being part of our trinity self, which becomes part of source, which becomes part of the origin, will be desired, and so recognition that we're all one in actuality will make a, a profound level of response into how we we interact with each other because then we'll find out that actually that person that we thought was our neighbor next door is actually us that person that we thought is a a rich person in a different country is us that person that we thought is on the poverty line in another country is actually us when we realize that everything is us and us is everything or we are everything then it will be a different kettle of fish and we'll be able to respond in a different more caring and sharing way good question next question from ab why did earlier hominids like the neanderthals and homo erectus exist what were their roles reasons for being here were they connected to humans in any significant spiritual way like a sort of prelude were their egos like ours? Did they have to reincarnate like we do? If so, what was it about their physical form they wanted to experience? Are some still reincarnating as humans today? Um, the, the physical forms that we've gone through um, are based upon the moving of the frequencies in a downward, in a downward way. So the the human form was much was much higher frequency than it is now we first started to use it and it had to be modified through the use of other incarnate entities to help us out modifying the genome for example and also importing different similar body types from different locations around the universe or around the galaxy but of a similar frequential level and so the form factor that we classify as being Homo erectus or Neanderthal or even ape is immaterial. It's just that that was used at the time for us to incarnate into because it was a more appropriate and more effective and efficient in how it interacted with the f frequencies of the, of the, of the day. Now, you may think to yourself, well, and the Neanderthal was part of a lower frequency. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe that it was a a form factor that we took on board to enable us to experience the lower frequencies, but was also actually able to cope with changes in frequency so we could experience high, higher frequential existences and also also the, the changes and the dips in frequency that are sometimes destructive um, and sometimes cause differences in our ability to interact with each other. So my, my, my feeling is that, that it was just simply a different body type that was used and that ended up being superseded as a function of our starting to work with each other in a more cohesive way whilst still not quite getting the idea of being connected or maintaining our frequencies to a level that we are connected to source we don't, we don't lose our connection to source, but that allows us to, to maintain a high level of communicative ability and know who and what we are whilst we're incarnate. Um, and, are, and are some still reincarnating as humans today? Well, 
there are definitely some genetic physically genetic traits that are the progression of the Darwinian evolution so to speak of the human form of that particular human form from then to now that you can classify as being sort of Homo erectus or Neanderthal based genome just look at the way people are and you'll see that there are various different genomes that have progressed and are continuing to be used now but it's the soul that counts and the bodies are just there as a vehicle for us to experience learn and evolve in these low frequencies so really it doesn't matter what they look like or when they were it's the fact that they were a vehicle and they were available to us is what counts next question if what we call death really occurs when a soul goes from the energetic to the physical then does a soul which is in the energetic experience trepidation fear or even terror right before it incarnates into the physical so this is basically turning it around that we what we call death is actually incarnation and what we call birth is actually going back into the energetic um my knowledge and experience suggests that souls are excited about <laughs> becoming incarnate um we very quickly forget the trials and tribulations we've had in previous incarnations we move on quite quickly and um we become very enthusiastic about another incarnation so the objective so the knowledge base of, of we forget who and what we are as a function of the the, the frequencies and our, and our lack of communicative bandwidth is sort of taken in its stride and as a result <laughs> there is no trepidation it's sort of it's sort of great <laughs> we're having a chance of incarnating in the lower frequency so we can evolve faster so it's more about motivated excitement rather than trepidation or fear <laughs> well i hope that helps and it's probably it's probably going to create a, a bit of a stir to think that it, um that souls would think in that way but we do women in energetic things that we think are horrible here are just a passing split split moment and you know and things like dying of an accident or or in a war in a plane crash or of cancer or or, or of covid 19 are simply a, a way of moving out of one incarnation and moving move, and coming back into the energy into the energetic where we normally normally belong it's just considered as a termination point um termination juncture and and nothing to even be worried about it's, it's like turning off the switch on the tv simple as that <laughs> okay next one mo and this is from this lovely lady who's doing the translations for the books into Japanese. So these are really good. These should be good questions. Some karma in brackets, thoughts, behaviors, and actions are deeply rooted within ourselves that they are difficult to realize and remove. Would you share some relatively easy ways in which we can realize them, sever the links, and remove karma on our own without having to ask for help from advanced spiritually spiritual individuals? Yeah, basically, use the observer self. The, the observer self is us uh, analyzing ourselves standing away from ourselves in a neutral way non-judgmental way and just seeing how we responded to something so when we interact with somebody or something or an environment and we could have done better we should say okay well, i could have done that better the better way of doing it would have been this way or that way and then next time we enter into a similar circumstance or a similar environment or a similar interaction with that environment or individuals within a circumstance within an environment and a circumstance within the environment <sighs> a lot of words there without breathing um if we think okay well last time i was in a similar situation i did this i thought i could do this better by doing that let's do that instead so we can do that but we need to give ourselves time to think um and remember what we were what we thought our our um, more efficient interaction or be or thought behavior and action was rather than allowing ourselves to sort of drift into it so the observer self is is without doubt the best tool but we need to use it on a, on a 24 7 basis and not not chastise ourselves for going down the same road two or three times because the thing is it's about understanding sometimes that there are times when we forget and there are times when we we don't recognize the the loop that we're in there are times that we don't recognize we're in a spiral because we get sucked into it and we start to be acting in an immersed way so we have to be you know we have to be sort of um 
kind kind to ourselves and realize that sometimes it takes a few times to learn the lesson it takes a few times to interact in the correct way that means that we we don't have to experience certain things again and again and again okay so it's just the observer self observe ourselves in a neutral loving non-judgmental way and make a note of how we've responded and if we think it's optimal great if we think we can improve next time then make a note, make a point of how we would improve in a similar circumstance next time and that's the way forwards okay that helps next one quartz crystals have so many variations in colors and healers are using each crystal for different purposes sometimes i wonder about their use what is the relationship between the color and the healing properties of the crystals what is the mechanism behind their functions um, in general quartz crystals are of a similar or same frequential state or should I say their function is with certain certain similar fun, certain certain similar frequencies or certain similar um, certain or similar functions depending upon how they're programmed the colors don't have an awful lot of, of effect other than the fact that some of the colors do shall we say limit the a function of a crystal or its ability to work with certain frequencies so that they're, they're a bit like um, um what's the word for it a governor they govern the the ability for the crystal to work in a certain way so but really in any crystal once you understand it's what what it's got what it's what it's its limitations are or governance is can be used for anything so although people say, oh, amethyst, a pink or purple amethysts are very, very good for, for healing, that's because they, they, their frequencies are, are usually governed to, to a sort of higher level because, because of their, their, their colours. But in real terms, you could still you could use them for other things like helping you to remember your, your dreams or your, what, you, what, you're, what you've been doing when you're astral travelling when you're sleeping every crystal can be can be programmed to do anything to do anything really it's just that the level of efficiency of that crystal to work with different frequencies is affected by the the color of them which is a function of their their their, their mineral makeup so to speak so my my feeling my feeling and my, my experience with crystals is that Although some of them are predisposed to having certain functions, actually you can you can pretty much pro program a crystal to do whatever you want to, if you know what you're doing, and you're and you're in tune with the crystal, because crystals sometimes have a natural function, irrespective of their colour. Some of them are good for you know, cleansing livers. Some of them are good for remembering transcendental uh, experiences. Some of them are good for calming people down. Some of them are good for assisting in healing. Some of them are good for amplifying healing or amplifying certain frequencies naturally. But those those crystals can be changed by a good, uh, a knowledgeable individual cleansing them of that 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 natural programming or that pre-programming, and then giving them another program as to what they can work with, based upon their limitations in terms of their, their, the, the the bandwidth of frequencies they can work with. Okay. Next question is in Morion crystals, your black quartz crystals seem to have distinctly different qualities than clear quartz or any other quartz. Would you ask our source entity on what levels Morion quartz works and its proper usage? Well, again, the, 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 the colour of the crystal limits the, the frequencies that it can operate at. It governs it. So, if I ask, the, if I ask what Morion crystals are good at, let me ask the, let me ask the, the question. I'm just being told they're good for slowing the body's metabolism down. Um, things like reducing blood pressure, for example. So the in this instance, you can use them for working with blood pressure and working with heart issues. 
in terms of circulation, you know, blood pressure, heart issues. Um, they're good at creating calmness. They'll be good for creating a good neutral energy in a space that people use together. For instance, if you're doing a workshop, you know, if you had to, if you put some Morian crystals in each of the corners of the workshop, um, for the space that you're using, the room, then it would create a calmness effect naturally. So they're so naturally, they're a natural calming energy. Okay. As, as I said before, you can, <laughs> having said that, you can, in general, all crystals can be programmed to do anything. It's just that they, the, 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 the colour has, has, has some effect, a minor effect, on the, on the frequencies that they are best, or, or, that, or that, that they are more efficient in working with. That's probably the best way to say it, isn't it? Things like amber, that's, that's also a good crystal, that's also a good calming energy. So crystals and, and minerals, they all have a, a function that work with, and depending upon their makeup, they, they have a, a predisposition to working more efficiently with some frequencies than others. Although all crystals can be programmed to do everything. Okay, well, that's all the questions, which is brilliant. So let's have a look at the meditation now and go through the meditation. Which is a meditation to be one with, to to be one and everything with the multiverse. So, I think we need to do this, don't we? Really, because we need to be one and need to understand who and what we are and that we are all one and together. So let's sit in a straight-backed chair if we can, or you can sit cross-legged on the ground if you wish, or sit kneeling if you like the Zen posture for meditation. Whatever you do, make sure your spine is erect. And that your eyes are closed with the closed eyes focused gently on the origin of the location of the third eye, which is in between the two eyebrows and above the bridge of the nose. And make sure your hands are palms uppermost on your upper thighs in the area where the legs meet the lower body. And right now you're feeling very individual. You are individual sentience. currently projected into and focused upon the body that you're in. Let's just let's unfocus from the body. So our sentience moves out of the body into the room that's around us. So we're the body and the room. That could be anything that's in the room as well. It could be the, the tables and chairs that's in the room as well, any of the insects in there or plants. We are one with everything in the room and everything in the room is one with us. We are all it. We are it. Let's expand that. So that's how sentience moves out of the room into the, so the whole house is ours. We are the house, the house is us. Now let's expand so that the, the street and the suburb that our house is in is us. Notice how you can change your attention. You start to see children playing in the street, 
people walking to the shops or walking home, walking their dogs, or just simply enjoying the environment. Now expand your sentience out into the city, your suburbs in. So you become the city. And then expand yourself even further so you're including the country that you're in. Now expand so that you're just on the land mass. Now expand so that you're the whole earth. You are the earth and the earth is you. There is no individualization of you on the earth. You are the earth. Then expand your sentience out again to deal with the whole solar system. Explain to yourself again that you're the whole galaxy. sentience is galaxy-wide. Then expand your sentience again so you encompass all of the galaxies in the physical universe. within the first three frequencies. Now expand your sentience so you're encompassing all of the frequencies within the physical universe. Not just the first three. So in every location, every galaxy, system, area of local density or planet, on all of the frequencies associated with the physical universe. So you are the physical universe. And then expand yourself into the rest of the multiverse. So that all of the frequencies associated with the multiverse and the universal environments that are part of it, the other 396 universes are also experiencing some aspect of your sentience. Within the multiverse you are now omnipresent. 
polyomnipresent. So you are the multiverse, and the multiverse is you. Feel the multiverse. Know that you're in every aspect, every location, every frequency within every, and every universe within the multiverse, all concurrently. We also know that you can change your focus and be one specific thing as well, as well as being one with the universe, multiverse. You're not just you in your form, your bodily form. You're the microscopic structure you're the leptons, the anu, protons, neutrons, electrons, the quarks, the strangers and charms. You're the galaxies. You're the universes. You're the multiverse. Just feel what it's like to be omnipresent, poly omnipresent, poly omniscient. Clearly, you're only allowed to, well, only capable of experiencing that which you can handle. You'll be able to experience much more communion with the multiverse when you're fully in the energetic. Don't forget that we limit ourselves and ourselves limit us. So let's start to come back. So start to shrink our sentience back just into being in the physical universe in all its frequencies. And let's shrink it back into the first three frequencies associated with the physical universe. And let's shrink it back into one particular galaxy, where the Earth is. And then shrink our sentience back into the solar system, where the Earth is. And then shrink it back into as being the Earth. and then shrink it back into being the continent that your country's in. And then shrink it back into just being in the country. The country that your city's in. And then shrink it back into the being in the city within that country. And then shrink it back into being in the suburb within the city that your house is in. 
and then shrink it back into being in the house and then shrink it back into being in the room that your body's in and then finally shrink it back into just being within the gross physical form the human incarnate vehicle that you're using at the moment to experience, learn and evolve in this particular location in this particular frequency and so slowly come back into the room slowly open your eyes take a drink of water if you have some to help ground you and you can practice this at any time actually you can practice it at any time to connect with the multiverse and be one with the multiverse okay so thank you for tuning in and participating in this particular satsanga on the 29th of may and i'm looking forward to seeing you all feeding you all in the next satsanga which is going to be on the 26th of june so the master to you all god's love to you all and go in peace and stay safe Did you see the aliens in Crete?